Can you spot the difference between a $100,000 camera and a $5,000 camera? Rough, rough rounded up numbers here, I know, but that's roughly the ballpark we're looking at here. The $5,000 camera is my daily workhorse. It's a 5DSR on a Cambo Actors with a Mamiya Secor lens. Beautiful images, but actually shooting an ad campaign tomorrow using exactly that setup. And I have no fear. But when we have really big jobs, or more specifically, jobs which require incredible accuracy, incredible high levels of retouching, or images where it's all monochromatic, like lots of the same color in there, then we do spring for this bad boy. Now, this $100,000 camera is a phase one, bolted onto a absolutely all singing, all dancing Cambo camera rig, which is the cool bellows bit, the movements. It's got rear movements, front movements, beautiful dials, very good. And then we have some amazing digital large format lenses on the front, which you can stop down to F32 with no diffraction. Couple that up with the bellows and all the movements, the tilt, the swing, the shift, the rise and the fall. There's very little this camera can't do, but can it create an image better than my cheap one? Now we're going to look at this in a few different ways. And at the end of it, I'm also gonna tell you why you would spend more because it may not be apparent initially, but we're going to look at the raw files. We're going to look at what my retoucher did to try and get them to match each other. And I'm gonna talk about his feedback on the files. And then I'm gonna talk about a little bit more as to why it is we spend so much more money on this camera because there's not much in it, but the, the difference is important. So let's dive into the computer. Let's do some lovely pixel peeping and I'll see you on the other side. So the shoot itself, super simple, two frames, identical lighting, identical set, got the images almost perfectly the same, um, but obviously there's a little bit of difference because of sensor size and I tried to get the lenses to be relatively the same. We had a couple of 90 more lenses in there. Now this whole video is made possible by Teamworks. So there's been no cash exchange here. This is not a sponsored video. They're just really good people. And I phoned them up and I said, can I have that really expensive camera? And they said, yes. If you wanna use this camera, you can rent it from them because I mean, you can buy it from them as well, but let, let's be real here. How many of you are gonna buy that camera? Probably, probably not that many, but renting it, I'd highly recommend it. Get a couple of test shoots in over a weekend, rent it out, jobs are good and get some beautiful work. It's also good to have a practice with these cameras before you move on to a big commercial shoot. You don't want your first time using like a huge technical camera with a 150 back on it being on some sort of major shoot and you suddenly realize how much light you need for the bellows. It, it, it can be stressful. Right then, here we go. These are edited. These have been like color corrected and we've tried to match them to what the scene looks like. And I think we've done a pretty darn good job. Um, so. What I've also done is I've removed resolution from the equation because megapixels are such a small part of what makes a camera great. Um, and most of the resolution is great before post-production, not after. So got TIFF A and TIFF B, both 4,000 by 5,000. I've cropped them to the same aspect ratio so that doesn't give it away. This is what they look like all the way out. Is A the expensive camera or is B the expensive camera? I'm going to do a little zoom in just down here. This is the pineapple up close. Now I've sharpened the living life out of this much like I would do with my own works. That's my own aesthetic. And again, you can see there's differences there. They're not identical in colors, especially on the label here. This label is different to this label. This one's got color in it. This one's pretty much black. I would say that this pineapple is ever so slightly warmer or has more warm tones to it. And then as we head up here, we can see a difference in the amount of detail captured from left to right. Now, how much of this you can see on YouTube, I don't know. I would say the right-hand side has slightly greater detail than the left-hand side, but the left-hand side is slightly sharper. And then here's the background. You can see the <laughs> nice bits of uh, sensor dust on both of them in various places. Well, there we go. That, that's edited. Now, let me show you what the raw files look like. This is where it gets really interesting. Now here, now, here are the raw files. Now, for those of you who know much about cameras, you'll already have given it away at this stage. But look at the difference from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. Same exposure. Zoom all the way in. This is where resolution plays. And look at my poor M1 Mac trying to, like, but you see how soft it looks up close. You can see here the color difference again there. 
how soft it looks up close with 150 megapixels. But as you start to come out a bit, let's try a different zoomage. You can actually see there's more detail. So at 150 megapixels, at 100%, maybe it's not as sharp. It's hard to tell, really. You know, because the focus is slightly different as well. It's never exactly the same as when you're using two. Like, this one's out of focus, this one's in focus. Um, there is a difference there. So try and find somewhere that's very sharp on this right-hand side image. I'd say around here. But this, the, I think the Canon has a crisper sharpness, much crisper. But then when you zoom all the way out, the right-hand side is clearly more detailed. So at 100%, this does look softer, but in real-world applications, it has considerably more detail. Other things to note. See this beautiful colour gradation from here to here? There are loads of different tones here, whereas here it's gone, there's a colour, have that. We had to do so much work on this in post to get it to look like this. This was a huge effort to go from here to here. This one here looks pretty good. It's straight out of camera, this side here is. It's a TIFF because we had to put it into a file format which is readable for everything. It's a TIFF, which is what we'd always export as, as well, as a raw file, but it's, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful file. This over here is a bit lacklustre. Yes, it looks sharper to me. I mean, it could be human error on this side, if I'm honest. Could have been some shake in there. I don't know. Um, but the big difference for me is up here. Look at the colour difference. And as we come along, look how the left-hand side stays the same, whereas we get a very nice gradual gradation of colour on the right-hand side. And that is where these cameras really, really shine. You know, th there's a real difference here. And of course, file size. When you start looking at this, 5,700 by 8,600, 10,000 by 14,000. It's a huge file. My retoucher said it was a dream to work with when you had to zoom in and carefully cut around it. And of course, we're using different lenses. It's not, it's not a like-for-like -like comparison, but then a like-for-like -like comparison wouldn't be of any use because you'd never work in that way. That's not something you'd ever do. Now that you've seen what is what, this is the retouching in action. Um, and I've sped this up because you don't need to see the entire thing. But you can see we mask out each item and it's all about trying to make the Canon file look like the phase file. Can we do it? Could we do it? And, and I think we did pretty well. But it took a real long time. The, the phase file was a few minutes. The Canon file took just around an hour to get looking as close as possible. And I still don't think we fully achieved it. But there we go. So could you tell the difference? Could you? I, I know that I can. But it's only because I've shot with the two so many times I can spot the files. I don't know. If I'd never shot with a 5DSR or an IQ150 back... I don't know if I'd know which one was which. They're both absolutely fine. But of course, there were some great differences. Firstly, the colours out of the phase one were beautiful straight out of camera. A lot of work was needed on the Canon. There was kind of like a thinness to the file. It didn't have that depth to it. It also didn't reproduce the colours accurately. What you could see in the phase was exactly what the scene looked like to the naked eye. What you saw in the Canon was a photograph of the scene. Very different things. Now, when it comes to retouching, the phase file is beautiful to retouch. You can grab that clarity slider because of the resolution and push it all the way up. The sharpening you can do to it is insane. But also, if you need to, and we do this with every file, so let me just let you know how we retouch a file on a commercial job. Every individual element is hand masked. Everything. The foreground, the background, the plinths, the subject, the different parts of the subject. This means that we can accurately colour grade, dodge, burn every element individually as well as retouch them. It takes a long time, but it gives us complete control in post-production. My retoucher said, doing it on the 150 megapixel back was amazing because you can zoom in so close that you can get a better mask. Now this is the same retoucher I used when I moved from a 20 to a 50 megapixel and he said the same thing between that gap as well. So obviously considerably more yet again. I would say in terms of sharpness, the Canon file looks sharper, but the phase one file has more detail, which is a very interesting difference. 
obviously Canon makes their files as sharp as possible because sharpness is something everybody on the internet chats about. But in terms of actual detail, it's very different to sharpness. A sharpened RAW file is not the same as a detailed RAW file. They're two completely different things. And with the final application being print, extreme digital sharpness is not really something we look at as pros. And, and if anything, it's often an issue with the Canon files that they just look a little bit too crispy. And um, we often have to deal with that in post. So that, that was an interesting difference. Let me know in the comments below, would you bother with the difference in image quality here? Would you rent it if you had a client who had the budget for it? Or would you stick to what you have already? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.